on divorce court today. Kalia had a rough start in life, left at a bus stop and then adopted by a family who had to research her true age. She was young when she married Dennis and is afraid their life together is beginning to fall apart. Kalia Spain and Dennis Spain have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in divorce court starts now. Mrs. Spain, you say that you are 19 years old on paper, but technically you're really 23. You have to explain that to me. Well, um, see, I, um, on paper, I'm 19, but in real life, I'm 23. My mother, who was a crack addict, burned all of my documents in a house fire. And so then I wasn't able to do anything or go anywhere. And it took several years for my adoptive mother to go to um, the Vital Records Office and find out how old I really am. And truly, I'm older than what it may be. I'm not 19, I'm 23 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, Have you ever resolved that? I mean, you can, you can reconcile all that to, you know, so I all of your documents. I never knew how. Yeah, Th there's a way to do it. I mean, we could get you started, but there is a way to do that. Um, Mr. Spain, there's no confusion about your age. You're 49. Yes, sir. All righty. And the two of you have been married for how long? Since March 23rd, 2011. OK. And you don't want to be married anymore. Uh, Mrs. Spain, why don't you tell me? You look like a bit of an unlikely couple. Can I just say that? <laughs> 23, 19, whatever you may be, 49. Explain to me the genesis of your union. How did you two get, get together? Well, see, in, um, in North Sacramento, that I met him in the same building I was in because I was currently dating somebody in that same building, and we were having issues, so I would go downstairs and talk to him and um, try and reconcile stuff, and I didn't know my father, so he was like a father figure to me at first. Uh-huh. And um, so I was always crying and running downstairs and all of this, and next thing you know, I just started dating him. And in the beginning of our relationship, it was great. But when we moved out from North Sacramento about five, six months ago, um, everything went from great to worse. Ms. Mr. Spain, do you basically agree with that assessment of the course of your relationship? Yeah, I do, but the reason why I don't want to have that much fun anymore is because we have a child. And th he's real time consuming. Yeah, how old is your child? He's getting ready to be 13 months. 13 months old, and you're, you got another one on the way. Yes, I'm six and a half months pregnant. You're six and a half months pregnant. Do you, do you think there's any validity in his statement? The reason we don't have as much fun anymore is we have a 13 month old that we're caring no, for. No, it's a kid. We, su we should go out as a family and do stuff as a family together, as one in a union. That's what a family does. Right. So I'm not understanding why he would always want to sit on his butt when we could take our child to the park and go down and slide with him and all this other stuff. Because where we came from in that same building, we would take 10, 12 kids out to the river, just me and him, out to the river with all of the parents' permission, so I'm not understanding what's going on with this. Mr. Spain, she says you, 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 you had a fun side, even with children, and, and, and you've chosen to be less than fun. Do you, do you see what her point there? Yeah, I do, but... Are you working? Yeah. Uh, do you work? I'm a stay-at-home mom right now because currently I'm pregnant, but I used to do daycare with my mom, and I did that for almost 17 years with her. You say that once you got married and moved, your husband abandoned his uh, familial duties in order to hang out with his friends. Is that true? Oh, yes, it's true. I was in the bathroom, and we got windows everywhere, and it'd be hot, so we opened up all of the windows so the air could circulate throughout the house. And um, all I hear was, Dennis, Dennis. And I know it's his homeboy. He's calling his name and stuff. And he was in the process of changing our son's diaper. In the process of changing our son's diaper and heard them calling him. So he just got up and just disappeared. And I come out the bathroom. I got a half diaper hanging off my son's butt. Did you leave mid diaper change in order to go hang with your friends? It was, it was, it was on there when I went out the door. It was on there, but he must have unpeeled it when, he, when we walked out. But I told her I'd be right back. 
<laughs> Were you right back? Yeah, like 20 minutes later. <laughs> Did you make sure she was out of the bathroom before you left? You can't leave those people alone at all <laughs> at that age. <laughs> No. Exactly. I thought she was getting out, but she wasn't. She was still in there when I got back. I can't do that, you know. No. You, you, you have to have an actual visual transfer from one to another. You can't just assume, oh, she'll be out in a little of this little person. It, you know, and cause a war before all that goes on. They're, they're very busy people. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, you say your wife too. nags you too much. Yeah, because if, like, if I don't get up in the morning with the baby, she'll nag at me. Even though the day before I did it, I was up with him the day before. That she wants me to do it the next day too. Sometimes I'm like, Dude, I can't do it every day. Well, let me ask you that, Mrs. Bain. He, he's out working every day. Don't you think you should get up with the baby? He works at home, in home care support. You clean up. I wake up at three, four, four thirty in the morning, being six and a half months pregnant with the baby. You get mad at me. You still sleep. What is it? Am I making too much noise or something? It's a baby. What do you expect? He's going to be loud. So I'm not understanding this. I'm not understanding it at all. Yeah, I don't understand that either because I do it just as much as she does every day. Sometimes even more. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes there's days where she don't want to do nothing. Where I got to get this, get the water, get this, get the baby, do this, take a put it in the bath. Sometimes I'm just really tired I'm and pregnant. I don't have time to do it. I'm still trying to figure you people out. <laughs> just the disparity or the difference in color or age or size or anything like that, but you're out there, wow, pow, you know, bing, bang, boom. And you got like, just laid back and, <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how this ever really worked because I, it, it doesn't compute for me. Um, why don't I ask you the question I asked her? When you two first got together, what was it that attracted you to her? Other than she's pretty, which we can all see. It was, a, it was actually her, her personality. Uh huh. And the way she, the way, the way she would carry herself, and it was just the way she talked. Everything about her, I liked about her. Ooh. Okay. I don't know. How, I don't know how else to explain it because we had. The same did you have any concerns about marrying someone so much younger than you? Yeah, I did. What were some of your concerns? Yeah, she would probably still want to go out and party and right. have younger friends than Did I Did you discuss that with her? Yeah. And yeah. what was what was the outcome of the conversation? That we wanted similar things. She didn't want she wanted to settle down and I wanted to settle down and spend time with her family, do a family thing instead of being out what? there doing other stuff. All righty, let, let okay, okay. And next is help from Dennis's family actually causing conflict in this marriage? Are your in-laws all up in your business and destroying your marriage? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Couples in Crisis, Real Resolution. Divorce Court continues. Now, Mr. Spain, is this your first, this is not your first marriage. Let no. me, let me clear that. You've been married before. Yes. And you've got a daughter that's older than she. Yes, I do. Okay. She says that your entire family doesn't like her and that you don't defend her. I do defend her. D does your family not like her? Let's start there. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know what it is. It, they just have a problem with each other. I get stuck in the middle. Family, wife. Which side do I go to? Yeah, Mom. I can't go to either side. That's an age old, an age old question. Yeah, you know, you gotta kind of have to. At forty nine, you should that have that one worked out by now. But anyway, <laughs> Mr. Spain, you say your wife spends too much time on social media. Why don't you explain that to me? First thing in the morning, she gets up, tablet in the hand, click, click, click all day long. Lunchtime, same thing. Taking care of the baby, got the baby in his hand. Tablet in his hand. Mm -hmm. If it's not there, it's on a charger. What's she doing on there? Media site she's on. It's, I don't know what it is. Like sometimes you'll be say you're talking to your friends, but I don't know because when I walk by, you turn this way. What the? Ms. Ms. Spain, do you spend a lot of time? 
I with electronic with devices. With electronic devices, but I'm never always playing games because I don't like sitting on my butt. So I'll be looking for jobs for after I have this baby. Mm -hmm. Little do he know. So that's what you're doing is looking for jobs. Yes, and I do not turn around. I'm pregnant. I have to adjust myself to get comfortable every now and again. I'm not turning away from you. I show you what I'm doing. I show him what I'm doing, and mm -hmm. I have witnesses for that. I show him what I'm doing on social media, looking for jobs. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's all. And talking to my mama because you still live in Sacramento. And you talk to your mom That's on, on, it. on there. Do you guys argue a lot? Sometimes. But it's more like nagging because I don't. Yeah, because you don't do I, You don't yeah, say if much, do you? I don't get the you? dishes done. You just kind of let it happen to yeah, you, right? Yeah, if I don't get the dishes done, or if, I don't, if I don't change the baby on his right time, or if I don't put him in the bath at 7.45, that's a problem. Sometimes you don't have time to do that. Sometimes you want to. You just got home and you just want to sit down and relax, but you have to be in the, in the shower, in the bathtub at 7.45. Mrs. Spain, you seem angry. Yes, I'm angry What are you angry about? You have to have compromisation in the relationship. I'm trying to get my son ready for when he has to go to school. And he already knows to go to bed at 8 o'clock, so I'm asking you because it's hard for me to get down on the floor and give him the bath in the bathtub because he moves a lot. He mm -hmm. does a lot of moving and stuff, and he's been kicking me in my stomach and stuff lately, so I've been asking him as the father to do it, but it's always a problem. He always think I'm nagging him. I'm not nagging him. I'm just asking you to do your fatherly duties. And I do do them. <laughs> well, so what he isn't he do? I mean, does he never do it? He just doesn't do it quickly enough for you? He doesn't do it well enough? What, what exactly is the issue? I sometimes have to do hard labor. Like? Pick up heavy objects. We got a cluttered house. We have a one-year-old. He's in the process of starting to walk. He crawls around everywhere, and he gets into everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm making sure my son is safe instead of sorry, because I don't want nothing to happen to my child just because you don't want to be a father and do it. When divorce court continues, can Kalia explain why she wants this marriage to work? Do you think the age difference between Kalia and Dennis is a problem in their marriage? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Here's the thing. I think she does nag you all the time and I think that she thinks you need to do more. But I kind of think you don't want to do anything because I'm pregnant. I mean, you don't have, you don't work outside the home, correct? Correct. Uh, I mean, what are you doing all day? Cleaning up, cooking for the child, cleaning up the house 24-7, making sure he can't pick up nothing and put it on the floor because it's all carpet, making sure he can't pick up nothing to swallow and chew. Do you know I've had a couple of kids myself? Yeah. And I know how much time it takes and how much attention it takes, and you, you know, it's a lot of work, no doubt about it. 24-7, 365. But it's not like you're saying that, like, you can't do anything because you gotta, you know, it's not like that. I mean, you know, it just isn't. You... Right? Right, but it's, it's like, you, when you have to ask him, he goes to, this is what the main problem is. I have to call him eight to ten times for him to show up. His hey, homies... Where will he be? In the next room, I'll be in the living room. In the next room, like our bedroom, which is right in the living room. All you well, have to do is Why can't you get up door. and get him? <laughs> why do you have to call him? Because it's, sometimes I be feeding the baby, and sometimes I be doing all this other stuff, and it's just getting irritating that um, I have to. I'm literally cleaning up the house too, 24/7, and that's what's irritating. He I lives don't there. Know what is wrong with you? You're living in a house that you don't pay for. Your husband's got a job. You don't work. You don't go to school. You got a 13-month-old baby. I've had a couple of those people. And I've been pregnant with a baby. And I know what it's like. And it's, and it's like, you're going to... I didn't text my husband from the next room. That's ridiculous. I didn't even have... We didn't even iPhone back then. <laughs> we had the whole kind... We had to walk all the way to the wall. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. We had to get your envelopes, everything, old school, get a stamp out, all of it. You know, it was labor intensive. You guys just clicking a button and worrying why 
you know, something just didn't pop up in the, the thing all of a sudden. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm mad now. <laughs> Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Mrs. Spain, in your petition, you said one of the most definitive things anybody's ever said to me. And you say, and I quote, nothing about this marriage benefits me anymore. And you want $300 for the replacement of cost of your wedding ring that you say he pawned. When you say nothing benefits you in this marriage, what used to benefit you that no longer does? He used to always be there, literally be there for me. Like, cause I be getting jumped on by his family member for the longest. I be getting jumped on and jumped on. He used to always be right there. But now it's a problem. He doesn't wanna, he doesn't wanna help. He doesn't wanna even come talk to me as my husband, he doesn't even want to come talk to me. And that, that's hurtful because your, your family members are jumping on me and jumping on my back and I got to deal with it. Jumping on you about what? Like, okay, like he had this friend and she had this friend. Um, and she was living with uh, the other family member at the time. And she was getting all called, all kind of names and stuff. I'm there to stop them names like all... I mean, foul names, all of those names. And then next thing you know, when she get mad at me, she's jumping on my back, calling me all the names I defended her for somebody else calling her. And I'm supposed to be a family member. I get it, I get it. M M M M Mr. Spain, does anything benefit you at all in this marriage? Yeah, having a family. Right. I don't want to lose a family. I've been through there before and lost it. And now that I have one again, I don't want to lose a family. Ms. Spain, you say he pawned your wedding ring without your permission. Explain that to me. And you want to be reimbursed for that. Explain that to me. We only had him for less than a month. And next thing you know, I was always wearing it, flashing it, and saying, oh, look at what my husband bought me, and all this happy and excited. But next thing you know, when I look in the specific spot, which is in the top drawer, my drawer, where I put all my feminine objects and everything else, that's where it was. I went one day, opened up that drawer, and it was gone. Now, were you living in his family member's house at the time, or were you still elsewhere? No, family in members. Family member's house. Mr. Spain, do you have any uh, idea where that went? I had to pawn him because I had to pay a bill. You had to pawn it? What bill did you pay? It was a phone bill, an outstanding phone bill that I had. He pawned it to pay the phone bill. Did you ask her? No. I should have. But I just went in there and grabbed it and went and sold them. Didn't even, didn't even pawn them, actually, I sold them to the... You sold them? Yeah. So I couldn't even get them back. That's the That's way, was the bad part about it. See? <laughs> Let me tell you something, See? Mrs. Spain. See? You know, I know you're leaving him. He's a good guy. He, he's a little, little, got a little dish rag going on over there. You know, he it, it doesn't seem like, you know, but he's a good guy. And he's, he, he treats you well. You're in somebody else's house. You want too much for putting in too little. And you're wondering why this man who's working and got you in with the relative can't do more for the baby because you're so busy, I don't know, lugging around this big belly. You're talking like nobody ever been pregnant before. Like, it's, a, it's like, man, you don't know what it's like. Been there, done that. You know what I mean? With kids in the house and everything. So, so you need to get a clue and get a grip and get, get some focus on the bigger picture. Uh, Pep it up a little bit. Get some coffee, something, you know. Just, just get a, you turn it up and get click, 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 something. You know, keep your wife happy, all this kind of stuff. But if you want to leave, you can leave. But you're not leaving with that $300 that he spent on a phone bill some three, four years ago. That's ridiculous. There's the doctrine of latches, which does not allow you to leave a whole bunch of years in between the wrong that was done and the money that you're asking for. Therefore, there will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. Kalia and Dennis agree with the judge. Kalia understands that she gets a lot of support from Dennis and will try to make their marriage work. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.